I have legally used the tax laws to my benefit and to the benefit of my company, my investors, and my employees. I mean, honestly, I have brilliantly, I have brilliantly used those laws. Here's my question. What kind of genius loses a billion dollars in a single year? There's a lot more to this story, and we're just slowly getting it into the public eye. As you know, Trump's taxes are now a huge campaign issue. And the time's going to tell whether it has legs here, but you can guarantee it will be a topic in Sunday's presidential debate. It has been dominating the news cycle ever since the Times published parts of Trump's 95 tax return showing that he took a $916 million loss that year. Now, earlier today, I spoke with one of the experts that the Times consulted with for the piece, Joel Rosenfeld, the CPA and also an adjunct assistant professor at NYU. Well, I got a bunch of questions, but first, I'm going to ask you to break it down for our audience that if those 95 returns that were leaked to the Times are right and the Trump campaign hasn't disputed it, and he lost 916 million bucks on that return. You were quoted in this Times as saying that he has a vast benefit that he got from his destruction. In layman's terms, explain what that means. Well, what we're looking at is a, uh, a almost a billion dollar, what we call carry loss forward. And that is specifically to 1995. We don't have all the uh, prior tax returns that actually created it. So we can assume that in 1990, when his casinos um, went under, when his airlines, uh, if I may use the word, crashed, and the Plaza Hotel, that probably created a huge amount of losses. What those losses were, we really don't know. So when you have losses, in, for example, in 1990, they could be carried forward to future years. It could also be carried back. We don't know if he's carried back, but we do know that he has carried forward. So the question here is, to what extent was the loss really? Was it really one, close to $1 billion? Or was it possibly $1.5 billion? Let's say, for example, if the loss was $1.5 billion, then from 1990 to 1995, if I may use the word, he sucked up the income in those years to reduce the loss down to what we see in 1995, which is $1 billion. So what could have possibly have sucked up some of those uh, losses? Uh, it could have been inc other income that he's had. For example, in 1995, he had interest income of close to $7.4 million. That would have been sucked up. Uh, also, I presume, although I don't have the documentation, that when the entities in 1990 went under into bankruptcy and et cetera, Mr. Trump was on a significant amount of debt at the time. And he walked away from some of that debt. And some of that debt we call cancellation of indebtedness income, which is taxable. And Joel, if I could, and I'm going to take the approach that I'm not going to give Trump the benefit of the doubt because I don't think, like many people, he's exhibited a lot of reason that we should. Tell me if any of these things are possible. One, that not all the 916 million bucks that we saw on the 95 return was actually his. I mean, he's the king of leverage, he's the king of debt that he borrowed it from some other people. Is it possibly represented on his returns that he personally absorbed those losses and would be able to write them off over the years when in actuality it wasn't all his money that he lost? Well, that's an interesting question, all right? <laughs> and it gets sort of technical. Um, why was he entitled to the losses? Well, when you have pass-through entities such as uh, limited partnerships or limited liability companies, uh, the losses are passed through. If you do have investors uh, in that uh, particular entity, uh, you have to look at to the debt. Uh, what I mean by you have to look at the debt is if that, in fact, Mr. Trump was recourse, meaning personally guaranteeing the debt, that was what we call added to his basis. And therefore, he would have a huge, huge benefit, tax-wise, of utilizing those losses to the extent of what he is guaranteed in the form of a mortgage or any other debt. When you think about it, did he really have to put money into the deal? He could have put other people's money into the deal. And he's getting the benefit of the losses 
vis-a-vis uh, an, an obligor on a recourse mortgage. Throughout the campaign, Trump has said that he'd want to close loopholes, Joe, like uh, carried interest, for example. And for hedge fund guys who get to pay, ta pay taxes on income at a reduced rate as if they were the investors, even if they didn't have skin in the game, makes a lot of sense to a lot of people. Isn't that hypocrisy, given what we saw, even in that one return for what he did? Isn't he, you know, having his cake and eat it too here in terms of putting down guys who aren't, uh, using his words, paying their fair share, when theoretically for 18 years, the guy might not have paid a cent in income taxes while telling everybody how rich he is? There are a lot, there are a lot of deficiencies in the tax code. There are a lot of special interests in the tax code. And as many students sometimes look at the tax code, they say, hey, that's not fair. That's not logical. As I tell my students, don't try and change it. Read it and abide by it. Is he entitled to his losses? Based on 1995 and 1995 only. Very important. Yes, you know, he, he complied with the tax code, as far as I know. Okay, but I haven't seen the prior tax returns either. Mm -hmm. So everybody's making a lot of noise about this, okay? And my, my opinion is, it's a perception, all right? To what we see, is it unfair? Well, my opinion, it is. Okay, but that's what it is. And there are a lot of things in real estate uh, that are, are basically unfair uh, or, or a, a advantage to uh, real estate owners that are not available to non-real estate owners. But it is what it is, and that's the tax law. And as, and as long as you abide by the tax law, whether you like it or not, I, and I would advise my clients basically the same thing. Fair enough. But as you've, and I'm not trying to date you here, you've been preparing returns for more than 40 years. Um, he's calling himself a genius for what he did. Usually when somebody comes into your office and they lost more than 900 million bucks over the course of a year or just about, does that qualify him usually as the guys that are, uh, whose returns you're preparing as geniuses? <laughs> well, for the, mo for the most part, I would ask myself, where did the losses come from, okay? And uh, obviously, it's, it's, it's from some real estate failures that it's coming from. Uh, I, I would look at my, my potential client and mentally say, is this guy really a genius? You know, I mean, he's brought down companies. Uh, the, the ones that we know of, going back to 1990. No, no, I don't think, uh, in my personal opinion, that Mr. Trump is a genius. I just think that he was highly leveraged in a lot of his deals and took him under. You've heard uh, Trump say that, hey, I, I can't release my returns, I'm under audit. My uh, accountants and my attorneys tell me I'd be crazy to do so. If you were represent, if you were his accountant, would you tell him the IRS, you know, if you release the returns, they're gonna come after you like hounds or you got nothing to lose here, just put them out like everybody else? There's no reason for him not to show his returns. The mere fact that he's under audit, he can show his returns. I think the uh, Internal Revenue Service agreed to that also and made a statement to the fact that he can show his returns. There's nothing precludes him from doing it. Joel Rosenfeld, I really appreciate a few minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we come back. The panel's going to break this down and put it into both political and practical considerations. This tax story and whether or not the public says this could be a bridge too far given the revelations, or will they say, hey, it's just doing business. We'll get into that after this.